good day, it's me, Jason, and welcome to Robot Show Tunes Reviews, my very own YouTube channel where I get to review Transformer toys, Voltus 5 toys, Macross Robotech toys, Evangelion toys, and whatever the hell I want. And now to kick off this channel is a review on DX9 War in Pocket Bumper, a third party representation of Dinobot Slag. Now, for this toy and other cool collectibles, visit GC Toy Collectibles in Shopsville, Green Hills. So, here's the box. The front, you have artwork of Slag in Triceratops mode, and a photo of Slag in robot mode, and you have the main label done in the original G1 tune slash toy line style. Both sides, they're identical, and it's just the same artwork and labels as seen on the front. And on top, you see photos of Slag, both in Triceratops and Robot mode. And uh, apart from the main label here, you also have the black and red grid, a classic G1 motif. The back, you have art showing the Dinobots versus the Constructicons. Again, the grid, slag in Triceratops mode and in robot mode, and this wordless bar graph, uh, which may or may not be slag's power levels or stats. The bottom, you have, let's see, you have warning labels. Now, let's see what's inside. All right, inside. Let's see, where did I cut the tape here? Okay. Inside, you have a single a clamshell, inside of which is the main figure, a sword, and a rifle. Uh, behind that, so this fell out, you have the instructions in a plastic bag. Opening. And you see this rifle. It's a basic black rifle, and you have this translucent red sword. Now, all the DX9 Warren Pocket Dinobots have a basic uh, sword, a translucent so red sword, and a rifle, uh, except for Su, who doesn't come with a rifle, but instead comes with two uh, wing-mounted missile launchers. And let's see your transformation instructions here. Illustrated and wordless. And you have the, the main figure. It comes in Triceratops mode. Now, let's talk about articulation. Okay, no articulation in the head except for the lower jaw, which is on a double hinge. Uh, you might just want to use the, the outer hinge because if you employ the inner hinge, yeah, the head comes out. Um, let's see, the horns, as packaged, point straight forward. Um, I tried angling them, but it turns out they were on, they are on square pegs, so, um, I didn't know that, and I used somewhat excessive force. I broke this horn off, and I had to super glue it back twice. Uh, because during transformation, um, I have I didn't drop him again or anything. Oh, I didn't drop him. It's just that uh, during transformation, I do tend to uh, touch this 
all over and well because my manual dexterity dexterity is not the best um so yeah uh, I, I brushed i brushed this and it came off again so i had to glue it back again um this one i managed to get at an angle without breaking it at the peg so um luckily in a way i guess uh that's one less horn broken okay now uh let's see four legs these four legs uh swing forward a short distance uh it stops because of the frill uh swings back only up to here because of the the outer armor and it slightly swings outward you, um it, it, it's also hampered because of the outer the outer armor um no articulation in the uh what do you call this? Uh, I guess you could you should you could call this the elbow. No ar articulation in the ankle. That's one solid, rigid piece right there. And let's see, the hind leg can go a uh, can do a complete three sixty. You can swing it all the way out. Combine that with the three sixty turn. Okay. Uh, there's articulation at the knee, uh, doesn't swing forward, only swings back 90 degrees. And there is a mushroom joint above that knee. Um, theoretically, you should be able to do a 360 with it. I'm not, I'm not sure, but it's so stiff, I'd, I'd rather not take my chances and I really don't I can't think of any poses where I have to you know rotate this anyway and there is no articulation whatsoever in this bright yellow tail okay now that's done let's talk about size comparisons so here is slag beside the following figures From the same line, here he is with DX9 Warren Pocket Optimus. With New Age Toys Bumblebee. With Masterpiece Tracks. With a high Bandai High Metal R VF One D, and finally with a Death of the Endless Funko Pop. Hey, didn't I take you and your kind some million years ago? Anyway, now let's get this three-horned guy transformed now, shall we? Okay, uh, to transform this guy, uh, what you'd want to do is to make him face you like this. Sp spread the legs <laughs> like that the hind legs rather to be more specific then you split the tail by pulling at the here okay then from there okay then from there bend these towards you And from there, now here's the part where you m might get an anxiety attack. At first, uh, there really is no clearance, so whatever damage, uh, I'm, I joke, but uh, there is no clearance, but um, just trust that there will 
be no damage whatsoever. Okay, from, from here, get one leg. Swing it around there. The other one. Swing it around there, okay? From there. Pull this out. Rotate it 180. Got that? Okay. Now from there, what you want to do, or what I want to do, is to split his shell. Let's see. I, I can probably do this with my bare hands, but why ruin my nails, right? Okay. Let's split that apart a, a bit so you can wedge this in. Okay. Alright. And then you roll, roll these out. These are the robot legs. Okay. And from there, take one half of the tail. Okay. Put this out. Put this out. Then put this in. And then fold this in into here. And then put this entire thing into the cavity so yeah the, the, that yellow tail that it's half of a yellow tail rather becomes one whole foot repeat with the other side open put in fold put in there Uh, from there, you split the other shell. Well, hold, on, hold on. Let me just show you. It's here. Split this. And then rock it. Hold on. Rock it back. take the four legs, you swing them out, and you hide them in between the back and the backpack. After that, get this piece, uh, two tabs here, two ports there, line up, put that in, okay, and finally, there's no tabbing here, this just rests, uh, the chest, the upper body just sits on the lower body with no tabbing system whatsoever, and you take these hind legs, the dinosaur hind legs, which are now the robot arms. Okay. What you want to do to fish out the fists from in there, you get the little guy's, you get the little guy's weapons. And fish them. Yeah, you fish. You fish the fists from out of there. So, in there you go. Okay. That wasn't in frame, I think. So, yeah, go there. Sword in the other hand. And to finish. Finish him off, or rather, to finish off 
transformation. Open the mouth, rest the lower jaw here in this depression. And there you have slag in robot mode. Now, I'll get him cleaned up and then discuss articulation in this mode. Okay, let's uh, start with the head. It's on a ball joint. I am a, yeah, it is on a ball joint. Uh, looks down a little, up a little without, yeah, without dragging this entire jaw. Um, presumably it'll go 360 degrees if it weren't for this hood and arms swing around one uh, 360 if not for the uh, the dinosaur wings uh, they swing completely out again there's this mushroom joint should do be able to do a 360 but it's so stiff so I'm not even sure if it does that and uh, let's see no waist swivel uh, you can you can bend his back but you'll break the sculpt and leg swings 90 degrees forward 90 degrees back 90 degrees to the side and any direction almost any direction in between because of the ball joint knee bends back oh, hold on knee bends back 90 not there right 90 degrees and uh, ankle rocks inwards wait I was able to do this yeah something like that so, yeah, it kind of breaks the sculpt, but if you do it a little, it, 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 it's a subtle, you can probably do a subtle inward rock. Uh, no outward rocking though, and you can kind of point the foot down. Okay. Now, let's do size comparisons in robot mode okay so here's uh dx9 warren pocket slag with the dx9 warren pocket dx9 warren pocket prime optimus here he is with new age toys bumblebee Here he is with Masterpiece T Torax. And here he is with Bandai High Metal R. High Metal R's. VF one D <laughs> Yes, VF one D, I'm sure. <laughs> and last but not least, here he here he is with Funko Pop Death of the Endless. Okay, so here are my final thoughts. Um, in both modes, you have somewhat limited articulation, and you have those parts brushing against the, each other during transformation. Um, though I don't think these are painted parts, so at least you don't have to worry about paint scratches. And um, there is, at least for me, the need for a spudger or some kind of tool to untab the robot legs uh, from from dino mode to uh, robot mode. And the ball joint at the waist of the chest piece is somewhat loose. 
it came off, it's prone to coming off, especially when untabbing it uh, to transform into dino mode. Um, also, one would have hoped for a better way to hide the dino forelegs in robot mode because, look, um, well, yeah, you can't see it from the front, but yeah, it's kind of very bulky at the back. Uh, pros, on the other hand, a very G1 tune accurate, except for the translucent red head horns, which actually I think are an improvement from the cartoon silver or white. And um, on the other hand, it's also, you have this silver lower jaw, which I'm not too crazy about because in the tune, this is yellow. Um, if it were up to me, it would be yellow outside, but in the inside, it would be silver. Yeah, because that's in the tune too. Silver on the inside, yellow on the outside. And, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Hmm. And I love this abundance of red color. Uh, Slag actually has the most red among the Dinobots, or at least in this line. And, um, hmm. let's see, you have this cool, sexy, uh, no-nonsense blue visor. And, of course, um, I, I haven't said this yet, but the transformation is clever, the, en the engineering is clever. Uh, one would just have, one would just have hoped that, um, there were more clearance. And, um, all in all, this is actually one of the handsomest uh, Warren Pocket Dinobots out there, especially when it comes to robot mode. Um, and uh, it's just me speculating, but maybe DX9 resorted to slightly wonky engineering to strike some kind of balance between the complexity of transformation and faithfulness to the G1 tune look. All things considered, this is, this is a cool toy. Uh, or maybe I'm just somewhat forgiving because I'm I'm a new hand at this whole collecting thing. Well, that's all for now. Give us a thumbs up if it so please you. Uh, subscribe and thank you for watching. Um, let's see. I'm not sure if we're, uh, for sure we're going to have a Facebook page. Um, that's a work in progress. Actually, everything is a work in progress. I'm not sure if we're going to have a Tumblr page, but um, at the end of the video, um, we'll tell you what you can subscribe to. And uh, again, that's all for now, and thank you so much for watching.